Hello and welcome to the video. I've come out to a local church to try to take some pictures of a graveyard which might sound a bit morbid and in truth is uncomfortable for me not because I'm worried about you know, disturbing the decaying corpses that are six foot underground underneath me but really about I don't want to disturb the, the mourners or the churchgoers that are going to be frequenting this church and I feel it's a bit uncomfortable to do that. I'm taking pictures in this graveyard because the group leaders have overwhelmingly decided that graveyard photography will be the theme of the challenge and I've come out to try to get some ideas, get some pictures that I can share with you to give you some examples of what you can do. Apologies for the sound quality. Unfortunately, I've lost my dead cat for my lapel mic and I'm a bit worried that the wind might be playing havoc on the, the audio. If that's the case, I'm really sorry for it and hope it doesn't ruin your enjoyment of watching this video. Your challenge is to take a picture that includes a graveyard. Of course, as always, the graveyard doesn't have to be the main focus of the picture, but as long as you can demonstrate, as long as you can show a graveyard in a picture, that's what we're after. Many of my photos include churches and quite often I've included the graveyard in those churches and I've used the gravestones as leading lines towards the church. So that's one good option that you can try. Obviously there's lots and lots of interesting things around the graveyard, lots of nice gravestones, in carvings, mouldings, all sorts of things that you can take a picture of that offer a really good photo. Another really good option for graveyard photography is doing it at night and I know some, some of you that's going to be completely uncomfortable but you could go out at night, bring a flashlight or a light source, illuminate some graves or even try to get a picture of the Milky Way from a graveyard, from a churchyard I think they, they would make incredible photos. There's lots and lots of options to get a really, really good graveyard picture. There are a few unwritten rules about graveyard photography and possibly a couple of them I'm going to break today. But obviously the first and most important thing is to show respect. Be respectful for those that are around you because quite often the people that are in a graveyard are mourning loved ones and the last thing that they want to see is you coming to their graveyard and taking photos of their loved one's grave. So obviously without any doubt, be as respectful as you possibly can when you're visiting a graveyard. The next thing to be aware of is that you don't really want to walk on, uh, on a grave. That's really not ideal, but in some instances you can't tell where a grave ends and a new grave starts. So unfortunately, sometimes that's just gonna be, have to be the case. And I've probably done that today already. Um, and the, the third thing to be remember is an unwritten rule that said you really shouldn't take and post pictures of a grave that are less than 100 years old. So obviously if, if the grave's over 100 there won't be anybody around in living memory but I would say you can get away with 50 or 60 years because in most cases that if a grave's been there 60 years that the, the, the relatives that are surviving won't probably remember or remember well that person that's in that grave. So yeah, just be aware of that. And potentially if you are going to take, share a picture of an inscription or a grave with the names and the dates on, try not to do any, any new ones because obviously that's a bit insensitive. I think in many ways we're lucky in the UK and in Europe in particular because we tend to have churches and graveyards pretty much in every town and village and you can just go and visit them and take photos in particular in the UK, and I'm not sure about the rest of uh, the, the English-speaking world, but we have uh, what's known as Commonwealth War Graves, where we've often buried those people that have, that have died in conflict in specific uh, locations and specific graveyards. And those graveyards are managed and kept by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. Now these graveyards often are really, really well kept, and the graves are in pristine condition and can make some really wonderful photos. Of course, the, the, the graves might not necessarily be over 100 years old, uh, so that's something to be aware of, but in some cases they are now in these days, and from the First World War, those graves are over 100 years old, but uh, Second World War and beyond, they're, they're unlikely to be that old. Uh, but they are a good, good option to take your photos. Despite the fact that graveyards are obviously lifeless by their nature, there are 
often quite a lot of life that you can photograph in a graveyard. I have seen a, a video where a gentleman had been putting seeds and nuts on a gravestone to encourage robins or other birds to jump on the top of the grave and take those photos. So that's an option for you. There's all sorts of other things like wild plants and animals that frequent graveyards and depend on how well the grave's been kept then there's often a chance you'll see lots of different things too. So there's lots and lots of options for taking a photo in a graveyard or of a graveyard. Despite the obvious morbidity of taking photos in the graveyard, there are in fact thousands of websites dedicated just to graveyard photography. In fact, just as many Instagram accounts. All you have to do is go onto YouTube and just search graveyard photography and you'll see hundreds of videos just like this one dedicated just to taking photos in graveyards so even though it's a bit sad it's a it's a bit uncomfortable there are lots and lots of examples of where people do it and, and do it successfully thank you very much for watching and really good luck with your photos I'm really looking forward to the pictures that you come up with you never ever cease to amaze me of the quality of the photos that you produce. They're always incredible, regardless of whether you use a phone or an expensive camera to take your pictures. You always seem to come up with the goods. I'm always impressed by your photos and you seem to take that extra, extra effort to get that photo. If you like this video, then I'd be really pleased if you'd give it a like and if you really feel like it, subscribe. The more people that like it, the more the message gets out and the more people we encourage to do these challenges. So it would be really, really, really nice if you could give the, the video a like. It's free, it's completely easy and just you can click that button. Once again, good luck with your photo and thank you very much for watching.